Students, I would like to talk to you about uh, making a contour line drawing um, with, with maybe a, creating a morphed creature today. Um, a contour line drawing, what is it? it? It is a line drawing, but it entails that we use outlines and uh, also that we, we're dealing with shapes that are open sometimes, but also closed shapes. So in contour line drawings, we're only using lines, um, but they outline things, but we also are dealing with textures and how do you show texture with an even shadow with using lines. Well, um, I've got here one of my favorite coloring books from when I was a kid. Um, this wasn't the actual coloring book that I used as a kid, but uh, you can see here, um, you know, the, here's, a, here's a face here. So we're just using lines. Uh, most of these are closed shapes. Uh, let's look at a different one. Uh, but we have some open shapes in this one. Uh, you can see so there's some marks here creating texture even shadow sometimes when they when they um you know create some lines close together like that we create a shadow uh, but most of those shapes are are closed as well you can see some lines that aren't quite attaching and um, so those are an option and they're all these you know a coloring book is a contour line drawing um, a lot of open shapes or closed shapes there um, there are more open shapes here. So you can see here where these textures aren't quite completed. Those shapes are left a little bit open um, and gestural. So um, another, another concept that I think that we should talk about here in, in your, your terms is that we're going to do a morphed drawing or a morphed creature. And uh, morph just means that uh, it's changing. So I want you to make a drawing of something live and combine it with something uh, non-living. And you're, you're gonna have fun with this. Uh, so what do I mean by that? I'll give you an example. So um, this is a drawing that I started by using um, a violin and also I found a few pictures of beetles and I created this non-living violin into a living creature by giving it uh, legs and wings and so forth. Um, I also give, am going to give it a background where there's this city below the, you can kind of see my buildings there. But as part of my assignment I'm, I'm asking you to draw from life. So to draw from life means that you find photos that you use as references. There's there's my violin. Um, you can see one of the beetles. I I had I wanted to copy its legs, so I used this beetle, its legs and its head. But then it didn't have wings out, so I found another beetle with wings. You find photos to use, including a background. So here's my building. I'm making this beetle fly over the buildings in the city. Um, uh, I do have some specifics about this. That I'd like to talk about, but let's let's go back to texture and shadow for just a minute. So on my violin beetle, um, I'm going to look at this beetle and and decide what am I going to do about this texture on the backside because I like that, but they you know uh, I want to put it here, so I might just do that by little marks like this. Um, and these are essentially those open shapes, right? Like I've got a bunch of closed shapes, but these are open shapes. Maybe they're all kind of rounded. You saw in that Transformer magazine or Transformer coloring book that uh, they had a little ha some little hatch marks for their texture. You could do dots. These are stipples, actually. Well, you know, impressionists use stipples a lot. Um, so. To create shadows, that's what you would do, is maybe create some stipples. You know, there's a shadow on this side of the violin or beetle, and so you're just gonna kinda let those die out as they get lighter. But also, um, another te technique is cartoonists often do this thing where they show several lines and maybe they get smaller for a shadow. 
those are okay in a, in a contour line drawing. So for my assignment, what I would like you to do is create your morphed drawing, and then I'm gonna use this as an example here. And your final piece will have a background. So I, you know, this, this artist did a really cool job with these guys here. You could think of transformers as morphed beings, right? But um, I love that the city's back in the background. So you will need to find a photo when you submit your assignment of something in the background. I don't care if it's a landscape or a cityscape or oceans and skies, um, but something interesting to, to contrast these guys. Notice how fine and thin these lines are compared to the thick lines and dark areas up here. So I would like you to talk about, I'd like you to think about line quality. And so that's the next thing on our list is um, that line quality matters. Okay, so I've already talked about different kinds of line, but line quality, so we're talking about thin or thick lines. We're talking about um, shadows. How do you do shadows and texture again? And um, so the thicker, heavy type things are gonna be up close and thinner are just gonna be farther away if you can think about it that way. Um, but you have some thin lines in here too where, where it just shows small details. And so have fun with that. But for my classes, I want you to color the background. So you're essentially creating a coloring book page, right? But I want you to color the background and I want this bold creature in the front to not be colored. I want that to stand out as a black and white thing. Uh, in class, we may go over your line quality and say, well, what can we thicken up and what can we make darker and what can we make lighter? But essentially these are all lines, right? I mean, you could say this is filled in here, but um, essentially that is a just a really thick line if you want to think about it that way. But we won't be shading anything. You will color the background. I don't care if you use colored pencils or um, or pastel or something, but let's let's make this pop off the page by adding color in the back and letting these the line quality stand for for itself.